Hi everyone. So we're outlining the uh, sort of process, our diet of the our ninth liver flush. Now these liver flushes are nothing to really be taken lightly. Um, we've done our research and we expect everyone to do their research and what we found is there are hundreds of stories if not thousands of people who have had tremendous relief of symptoms and problems and disease and save their liver and gallbladder from doing the flushes and so we've had eight successful flushes and had tremendous success relieving everything from muscular pain not to mention save our gallbladder and but it, it is something that's not to be taken lightly in other words you have to have a week where you can be a little bit stress-free really pay attention to your diet and stay away from all animal products and sweets and substances and take this as a meditation, you know, learn about your body, do some yoga, you have to have the time to do your enemas, and you've got to do it properly. And follow the guidelines in the book, The Amazing Liver Gallbladder Flush by Andre Moritz. Read the book, you know, read the stories of the people who've done the flush and had tremendous, tremendous success healing their bodies. But don't take it so lightly, and don't do some method that is not um, uh, I don't know about other methods of liver flush. We've been doing the ones outlined in that book and have had tremendous success. So pay attention to your body, be easy about it, and remember you're not going to suddenly cure all your ailments if, you've, if you're coming into trying to do a flush after a whole lifetime of eating processed food and bad food and being overweight and having all sorts of diseases and symptoms. You've got to start somewhere else. Like, Don't start by doing a liver flush. For God's sake, start by cutting out processed food, cleaning your diet out, go through a, a colon cleansing routine by um, uh, the natural healer, Dr. Richard Scholl's health crusade cleansing. You know, do things like this. Go get some colon hydrotherapy. And once you think you've got control over your body, your diet is better, and you think you're ready for this mentally and physically, then go ahead and work with your, do a liver flush. But um, listen to your body. I'm in touch with my body. I know my body. And I know this is good for my body. You know, if you're not in touch with your body, there's going to be a lot of fear about things. And if there's fear, it's because you're not ready and it's not for you. Don't do it. But once you're in touch with your body and once your mind is in the right place and once you're able to meditate, you know, pray about it, meditate about it. You know, this is where your guidance comes from. You go within and see if it's for you. So from there, we'll get started. Hi, today's Monday. It's the first day of the preparation for our liver flush. So follow along with us and we'll show you the whole process. So it's the first morning. We're preparing for the week-long uh, preparation for the flush. It's a week where you want to take it easy. You want to be very clean with your diet. You want to be able to do some yoga. You want to meditate. You want to sort of prepare your body for the cleansing. Cleansing is not just a physical thing, but it can be an emotional, spiritual, mental thing as well. Well, to start it out, um, one thing is you want to, of course, remember to stay away from all animal products and the nuts and the seeds and the stimulants like coffee. And so there's plenty of things that you can do 
um, to substitute any of that. What a lot of people do is they just panic thinking that they're not going to be able to have things. When there's many times in our life we don't have those things but we don't panic. But when we suddenly think we're doing without, then we might panic a little bit. You just have to be a little bit of a creative chef, I guess. And if you are one of these people that are working, 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 busy, busy all week, well, this might not be the good week to do a liver flush. But if you have a steady routine, even though you do work, you still should be able to do this. If you can't cook your own food, there's other places that you can go to get the proper nutrients that you need for the flush. But uh, we don't live our life in that fashion, so we have the time to cook and nurture ourselves. So one thing that's not going to change for us is every morning we always start out with uh, a glass of warm water with lemon. And if you look on my website, I've just posted some of the amazing benefits of lemon. I mean, lemon, uh, this, the um, citrus pulp is a great suppressor of tumors. It uh, reduces fatty components in the blood. It feeds good bacteria. So we usually juice one whole lemon with the pulp in our water with some warm water. And then we put a sprig of um, cayenne pepper on top of that too. And of course cayenne pepper, incredible properties of cayenne pepper for the blood, anti-cancer properties, and this digestion stimulation. It goes on and on and on. A little cayenne pepper. So that's how we start our morning. And the next thing that we usually do is after this digest goes through our body, we do a juice blend of um, aloe leaf, fresh aloe leaf, and we usually do it different things. Sometimes we'll do it with a mixture of greens, sometimes we'll do just apple, sometimes we'll mix apple juice. Today it's going to be um, fresh organic apple and blueberry, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. The next thing that of course you have to do every day is 32 ounces of water with uh, malic acid. That is if you're going to do the substitution for the apple juice. Otherwise it would be 32 ounces of organic unfiltered um, for, uh, apple juice every day. But we, um, instead of doing the apple juice, we've done both. We've done the apple juice and we've done the malic acid. And it just seems the malic acid is easier. It's a little less expensive. So we're doing the 32 ounces of water. It's a 32 ounce jar. It's usually what our coconut oil comes in. We save the jar. And then we put in, uh, we get this online. It's from L.D. Carlson. It's a um, malic acid food grade. And it's just one teaspoon in 32 ounces. And it's a little uh, sour tasting. So if you want to add a little juice to it or something, you can. And you just sip on this all day long along with your water and other things. So that's it. That's the way to start. All right, so today it's going to be pretty simple. We're just going to blend up some blueberries and apples. I mean, wonderful fresh organic apples. Eat what's in season. Apples are vital for your diet. All I'm going to do, put the blueberries in there, add some water, add about two cups of water in there or so. And then just give that a whirl and blend that up. And then I'll drop in my apples and I'll give that a blend as well. Now I'm going to fillet my aloe vera leaf. It's kind of a small leaf usually have much bigger ones, but I'm kind of running out of the big leaves, so we just have a small one. Just run it down the outside. You know, some people actually blend with the skin. And if you have a really nice, good, powerful juicer, I'm sure you could do that. Take the skin off. And here we go. Getting a nice 
fillet to come off of this. There we have it. Look at that nice, delicious. Aloe vera has got so many healing properties. Are you kidding? I was reading and studying once a man, an herbalist, he was saying if there's, he studied herbs all over the world, and if there was one, only one herb that he could have, it would be aloe vera. He'd feel safe that he could heal his body with just that substance. Uh, the rest of this, you know, you can put on your skin. Great for the skin. You know, anything that has these mucus components um, are incredibly healthy for the digestive tract. For the, and so, get your mucus on. There we go. And uh, now that, I'm just going to pulse a few times. Voila. And what I might do is add a couple drops of a uh, pure stevia or something to sweeten it up if I want to sweeten. But I think the apple's going to be fine. And there's our little super potent drink of the morning. One of them. We do many different types of drink, but lately this is what we've been doing. And it's been helping uh, uh, our, my gut a lot. As you know, I've been going, I had been going through a healing process with uh, my gut parasites and cleansing the liver. And this has all been an incredible part of that. So there you go. And the rest of this, I'm just going to rub on my skin. Hmm. Feels good. Okay. Day three and been pretty easy. We just 
I had some great food. There's a lot of great vegetables in the season. And today I'm making another speci special dish, my uh, drowned zucchini, which could be drowned eggs if, uh, when we weren't doing the flesh. Because remember, no animal products whatsoever. You got to do it right. No animal products. Be easy about it. Take care of your body. And, of course, another 32 ounces of water with a teaspoon of malic acid. Sip it all day long. Mmm, yum. So at 6 p.m. when it's time for the first Epsom salt drink, you're going to need food grade Epsom salt. Food grade Epsom salt. And I always start out with and six ounces of water. These are, eight, I think, eight ounce glasses. So I start out with a little warmer hot water just so the Epsom salt will dissolve a little easier. And an entire tablespoon, one for her, one for me. Stir that up a little. It takes a while for this to dissolve up. Then add some water. And there we go. And I'd say a lime chaser is a must. It's not the best, it's a bitter tasting. So a lime chaser is really good to have with this. Now, Epsom salt, we've seen Epsom salt in our local grocery store um, sold in bags by uh, Kroger. And Kroger actually sells it. And on the label it says, you know, to be, you can be used as a mild laxative. So drinking Epsom salt is not some crazy fanatical thing. It's really not a big deal. Of course, you don't want to overdo it. Some people overdo it. I've heard some people drinking like up to a cup of Epsom salt, which I think is kind of ridiculous. This is one tea tablespoon, one tablespoon. And, you know, be smart. So, I guess it's time for me to do mine, and then I'll bring Yungi hers. Okay, down the hatch. That lime helps it. We just finished our first Epsom salt of the night. This is day six. This is the fun time. This is when the flush begins. 
As you saw, we had uh, breakfast. Well, Jungi had a breakfast. I chose not to. I chose to fast today. So then what we did is we did a yoga class at 12. We did another yoga practice at 3.30. Didn't eat anything. Came home. Did our Epsom salt. And now in between the Epsom salts, we're going to do another coffee enema. And we've got our wonderful pink grapefruit. We've got three of them that we are going to juice for our final drink tonight with some local cold-pressed virgin organic olive oil. So we're ready to go for the night and we'll catch you later. So now when it comes time for the drink of the night, your olive oil and grapefruit mix, this is what you do. We found some great wonderful pink grapefruit. Pink grapefruit is what you want. Pink grapefruit freshly um, drawn and with two nice big grapefruit I was able to get 12 ounces because for each glass you want 6 ounces of juice and 4 ounces of olive oil. And you want extra virgin, cold pressed, all organic olive oil. This is what you want going in your body. And organic grapefruit juice, whether it's fresh or from a, a bottle. But you're going to have four ounces of olive oil, six ounces of grapefruit juice. So here we are, we have our drink of olive oil and grapefruit juice, freshly squeezed grapefruit juice. And so now we have to shake it up, drink it. I'm very excited because I haven't eaten all day. This is my meal. And then lie down and go to bed. And as you know, we've already done uh, an enema tonight. And the reason why you want to do the enema is to get your a whole colon clean that way um, you really have a good flush and there's nothing um, blocking that so here we go we're gonna drink it up ready babe shake away okay cheers cheers darling mmm delicious I love olive oil. That was delicious. All right, now we gotta lay down. It's bedtime. Lay down immediately. Good night. Yes. So it's 6 a.m. and it's time for our next drink of Epsom salt. I made one last night and just left it here so I could just get up and drink it. And they say um, you can also do a enema between now and the next drink, but we're going to sleep instead, continue to sleep. So um, We had a lot of rumbling in our belly last night. Uh, I ended up getting up once to go to the bathroom, but pretty much just brown water. No stones yet. The stones will come in a couple hours, so cheers. It is Sunday after all. Good night. A little after six. I just came back from the bathroom. My first flush and had a few stones. It's very small. I'm excited for a big one because I had a lot of rumbling and felt something 
a big move down my transverse before I fell asleep last night. So, I'm drinking my third Epsom salt. I have my line chaser. Delicious. So it's 8 o'clock and it's time for our fourth and final glass of Epsom salt. It's 8.20, I'm getting a lot of rumbling. I think something's about to come out. How about you? I already had some come out. No, but you're just... I'm waiting for more though. A lot of rumbling going on. If there is any more, get my chance. 8.40, time to go again. I had only about five stones that time. Now my turn. Bye bye. This is why if you're doing it with two people, it's good to have two bathrooms. Because she's in there now, and now I gotta go, so I'm going to use the other restroom. But so far, not that many stones. Seems like we're pretty good after nine flushes. Seems just like we got pretty much them all out. Here we go. I'm back. I had a lot of little small ones, very tiny ones. I kind of feel very similar to um, the first flush. You feel like you're pretty clear? Yeah, but I'm excited to do an enema and see if anything else comes out that yeah. you know, might be stuck in there. Why is it important to do an enema? To help clear out the intestines. Because we have grooves in there and um, some stones might be lodged in the grooves and we got to get some fluids in there to flush it out and the coffee actually helps um, st stimulate the liver. Hi. So I'm preparing the coffee for our final two coffee enemas of the flush this week. It's great to be completed. We have successfully flushed, you know, about so far maybe only about 10, 20 stones each small compared to the first, second, third, fourth, fifth flushes where we flushed hundreds and hundreds of stones the first few times and then they got progressively bigger, as big as two inches. You know, I flushed one and Jungi flushed several one inch size stones and then they started just becoming sporadic and it just feels like we've really cleared things out. Last flush I hardly got any stones and this flush not that many. So it seems like we really are happy with what we've done with our flush. We followed the protocols in the book, we've done it correctly, we listened to our body, and it's been great. We've relieved ourselves of a lot of uh, you know, muscular pain, we've been able to maintain our weight better, our digestion's been better. We've just overall had a lot of energy and it felt really good. So typically, um, it's nice to do a colon hydrotherapy um, later on in the day of your final, the sixth, seventh day of your flush, we're going to do enemas today and then we're going to get our colon hydrotherapy in a few days. So, um, I encourage you to read the book and don't be afraid of natural remedies because I think it's um, a little bit bordering on ridiculous that people are fearing to do natural remedies thinking that there's some drastic measure like an enema. Enemas were done regularly in households all over the world and even in hospitals. And then they stopped doing it because we discovered drugs. Well, take your choice. Drugs or surgery or natural remedies. You know, if you want to be put under and let someone cut you open, okay, maybe that's better for you because you don't you're blind to it. You don't see it until you come out of it and feel the pains of that. But you can't escape the um, process one way or the other, whether you experience the pain through getting surgery or disease and, and getting on medication, or whether you actually learn about your body through natural processes. So we're going to continue now with our final two enemas, and I'm excited to have some soup when we come out of the flush, you be gentle with your diet for the first couple days, of course, start with soup, vegetables again, 
and then you can slowly get back to what you were eating before. Hopefully it's still good stuff. So my recommendation, find joy, be joy, and love your body. Peace. I was set up and everything. So I'm Where are you going?